Welcome to this tutorial on chess radiograph interpretation. We start our assessment of this frontal chess radiograph by determining its projection. As is indicated in the top right corner of this image, the film was taken in the PA orientation. This means that the radiograph was taken with the patient standing with their back to the x-ray source and their front against the detector. We now assess the film for the four parameters of technical adequacy. Firstly, inclusion. For complete assessment of the chest, we need to see both apices and both costophrenic angles. It takes two to three hundred milliliters of pleural fluid before blunting of the costophrenic angle can be seen on a PA film. Even slight obscuration of the costophrenic angle can hide a significant amount of pleural fluid. Now we assess the film for adequate penetration. We should be able to see the vertebral bodies through the cardiac silhouette in an adequately penetrated film. After this, we determine how deeply the patient has breathed in. We should expect to see 9 or 10 posterior ribs. The final parameter we assess is rotation. In a non-rotated image, the clavicular heads should be equidistant from the spinous processes. In this example, the left clavicular head is slightly closer to the spinous process than the right clavicular head. This indicates that the patient's body is rotated to their right side. Rotation to the right means that the right lung will appear less damp than the left, and therefore blacker. In this particular case, the degree of rotation is unlikely to make a significant impact. Having assessed the four parameters of technical adequacy, we move on to assessing the film itself. We start with the trachea, which should be seen in the midline of a non-rotated film. We can follow the contour of the trachea down to the carina, where the trachea bifurcates into the right and left main bronchi. The trachea may deviate towards or away from certain pathology. A tension pneumothorax or large pleural effusion will push the trachea away from the affected side, whereas lung collapse will pull the trachea towards it. We describe the appearances of lobar collapse in a separate video. On either side of the trachea, we see the right and left paratracheal stripes. Abnormal thickening in this area can indicate a mediastinal pathology, such as lymph node enlargement in lymphoma. The inferior part of the mediastinum contains the heart. On the right, the border is formed by the right atrium, whilst the left border is formed by the left ventricle. The presence of cardiomegaly can be assessed on a PA radiograph. If the width of the heart is greater than 50% of the width of the lungs, then cardiomegaly is present. Pericardial effusion may mimic the appearances of an enlarged heart, with the shape of a water bottle. When assessing the mediastinum, we review the paraaortic line. This begins at the aortic knuckle and extends inferiorly. The paraaortic line represents the left-hand side of the descending thoracic aorta. The contour of the aorta may be deviated in the elderly as the aorta becomes more ectatic. Having assessed the mediastinum, we now move on to the diaphragm. Follow the contour of the diaphragm from the cardiophrenic to the costophrenic angles. As discussed previously, blunting of the costophrenic angles can signify a pleural effusion. We continue along the lateral border of the lungs and make our way into the apices. As we do this, we evaluate for pleural-based pathology and for pneumothoraces. A small apical pneumothorax can be hard to spot. Look for a pencil-thin line along the lung edge with an absence of lung markings beyond this line. We now come to the lungs themselves. It is crucial to compare the bronchovascular markings on one side to the other when assessing the lungs. Compare the upper zones, then the middle zones, and then the lower zones. Remember that the lungs extend posteriorly below the level of the diaphragm. Look for abnormal lesions such as metastases or lung nodules. Consolidation or airspace opacification is another common finding and is confirmed by the presence of air bronchograms. The location of consolidation can be determined by assessing which mediastinal or diaphragmatic silhouette has been obscured. For more information, please watch our supplementary video on consolidation. We now move on to the hilar regions. The left hilum is expected to lie slightly superior to the right. Particular attention should be paid to the hilar regions as malignancy or enlarged lymph nodes can be overlooked in this area. For all the visualised ribs, follow the contour of their upper and lower borders. Discontinuities in a rib's contour can indicate a fracture. Assess the height and alignment of the vertebra. 
loss of height can indicate trauma or bony metastases. Malalignment of the spine can signify scoliosis. The bones of the shoulder joint are often seen on chest films and the presence of fractures should be noted. Below the diaphragm we have the liver on the right and the stomach on the left. Air contained within the stomach is a normal finding. However, finding free air under the diaphragm is suggestive of a perforated abdominal viscous or recent abdominal surgery. The chest wall, breast tissue, shoulders and lower neck can often be seen on a chest film. Subcutaneous emphysema may be visible as gas locules in these areas. This concludes your assessment of the normal chest radiograph. During this video we have demonstrated a standard approach to chest radiograph interpretation. If you would like more detail on chest anatomy, then please visit our website.